Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at the best cameras that you can buy under $1000 or euros in 2023. The budget friendly part of the camera market went through some tough times during the recent supply chain crisis. We haven't really seen many new affordable cameras released in the past couple of years. Despite that, there are still some interesting options available, so in this video we will take a look at 10 affordable cameras that you can get at the moment and two types of cameras that you should not buy despite their attractive price. Fujifilm X-S10 is one of the latest cameras with a launch price below $1000. It is also one of the most capable cameras that you can get around that price point. It represents the pragmatic side of Fujifilm cameras with a conventional PSAM dial and standard controls. The biggest highlight of the X-S10 is the size to performance and feature set ratio. Fujifilm was able to pack an APS-C sensor and in-body image stabilization into an extremely small body utilizing a magnesium frame. It uses the x transfer sensor so the level of detail and dynamic range are the best that you can currently get under $1000. The in-body image stabilization in X-S10 is very effective. It is much better than I expected based on that 5 EV rating. It can also work together with optical image stabilization in the lens to provide an extra stop of stabilization. The X-S10 can shoot fully downsampled 4K DCI up to 30p and 200 megabits per second. It can also output 10-bit 422 externally which is a very interesting option. A big improvement is that it can shoot 30 minutes of 4K video thanks to that magnesium frame. The autofocus is basically the same as with the X-T4, which means that it is very good, but not quite perfect. There are some compromises such as the smaller battery, small viewfinder and lack of weather sealing. All of those are in my opinion acceptable at the size and price point. Fujifilm X-S10 is still one of the best cameras under $1000 or euros on the market. One of the most popular cameras under $1000 is currently the Sony ZV-E10. And there are some good reasons for that. It is a very pragmatic package designed to meet the needs of content creators. It is extremely compact and it offers an incredible size to performance ratio. The build quality is not the most premium but completely acceptable at this price point. It uses an older 24 megapixel non-BSI APS-C sensor. Despite that it produces very nice images and outstanding 4K video. It uses updated color science, so there is absolutely no need to be worried about the colors, much like with any Sony camera released after 2018. A huge strength of the ZV-E10 is the autofocus, which is the best that you can get under $1000 in both stills and video. Basically the only weakness of the ZV-E10 is the in-body image stabilization or the fact that it doesn't have one. That means that you will mostly want to use it with stabilized lenses. It actually works great even with the 16 to 50 mm kit lens. There is no electronic viewfinder on this camera, which is the correct choice considering the target audience. Also worth mentioning is the audio quality, which is very solid thanks to that large microphone array on the top of the camera. Overall, Sony ZV-E10 is a great package, especially for content creators. Panasonic G9 is an older camera, but thanks to that you can now get it under $1000. It also offers by far the best feature set that you can get under $1000. It has great in-body image stabilization, 4K 60p with no crop, decent autofocus and even 10-bit 422 with VLOG update. I think that it is still one of the best cameras ever in terms of ergonomy. It uses an older 20.2 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, which is not backside illuminated. The output that you can get from this sensor is okay by today's standards, but nothing special. APS-C cameras on this list will provide better resolution, dynamic range and low light performance. Having said that, it is still good enough for a lot of users. One of the highlights of the G9 is the stabilization, which is still excellent even by 2023 standards. It uses the DFD autofocus system, which is actually not that bad in this specific case. In the G9 it is actually very reliable and accurate. 
The only issue is that last bit of hunting in the video as it finishes the transition, which will ultimately give away that it is a contrast based system. Also worth mentioning is a really good electronic viewfinder with a panel which is still being used in the latest mainstream cameras. Overall, if the output is good enough for you, the G9 is by far the best equipped camera that you can get under $1000 in mid-2023. A more premium alternative to the ZV-E10 is Sony A6400. It uses very similar hardware but in much more premium magnesium body. It has an electronic viewfinder which is not that great by 2023 standards, but better than nothing I guess. It also has a very sophisticated screen mechanism which combines the advantages of tilting and rotating screens. Much like the ZV-E10, it can produce very solid output with the same excellent 4K video quality. It also has more control elements than the ZV-E10 which makes it a better choice for more advanced users. It also shares the only downside with the ZV-E10 and that is the lack of in-body image stabilization. If you need the IBIS, Sony A6600 is basically an A6400 with in-body image stabilization, larger grip and much better battery life. Unfortunately, it still costs more than $1000. Sony ZV-1 is a 1-inch type compact camera that shoots very nice 4K video and 20 megapixel stills. It combines a still very modern 1-inch type sensor with a 24-70mm equivalent f1.8-2.8 to lens in an extremely small package. It also adds the rotating screen, which is something that modern content creators seem to appreciate a lot. The output is very solid thanks to the very modern 20MP backside illuminated 1-inch sensor. This sensor has a very good dynamic range and reasonable low light performance. Importantly, the autofocus on the ZV-1 is basically perfect. It is extremely fast, accurate and smooth. The image stabilization generally works well, but it isn't that great for vlogging in-your-face type of shots. I generally don't think that the usually handheld in-your-face vlogging shots are the biggest strength of the ZV-1. I would probably go with DJI Pocket 2 for that. An alternative is Sony RX100 Mark 7. This is a more premium compact camera with 28 to 200 mm equivalent lens. It also has a viewfinder and I personally prefer the tilting screen on the RX107. The rest of the specs are very similar to the ZV-1, but unfortunately it costs more than $1000. Panasonic GX9 in my opinion still makes a lot of sense, especially for stills photography. First of all, it is quite small, which used to be a major selling point of Micro Four Thirds cameras back in the day. It uses a 20 megapixel Micro Four Thirds sensor, which performs ok by 2023 standards, but it can't compete with x 4 cameras such as the X-E4 in shadow recovery or high ISO performance. Having said that, it takes very nice stills in sensible situations. I would maybe even say that it has a slightly nostalgic look to it for a people such as myself who used to shoot a lot with Micro Four Thirds. Importantly, the sensor is stabilized in the GX9 and the efficiency of the in-body image stabilization is actually very good. Much better than with the A6600 for example. The autofocus is not great for tracking or for moving subjects, but again it will perform well in majority of reasonable situations. It has a very decent 1080p video quality, but for 4K I would recommend something else because of the additional crop and very poor autofocus in 4K. Fujifilm X-E4 uses the same sensor and processor as the X-S10, so the output is the same. It is a more experience-oriented camera. The X-E4 is again extremely small. It is just 12cm wide and it weighs 364 grams. XE4 has no in-body image stabilization because it stays true to the XE concept as I've explained in my review. The build quality is really good with this one. It is almost on par with the X100V. It also retains a lot of X100V shooting experience. It is basically an alternative to the X100V for those who don't want to be restrained by a fixed lens. It actually shoots great 4K video, but the controls and the form aren't very video friendly. 
It has a great 1.62 million dot display, but the EVF is quite poor. Other than that, it is a lot of fun to use, especially if you pair it with a 27mm f2.8 Mark II pancake glass. XT32 is very similar to the XE4, but it has more controls and slightly worse build quality. To be honest, I definitely recommend the XS10 instead if you want an all-round capable camera. If you want something more experience oriented, I recommend the XE4. It is cheaper than the XS10, but I think that the in-body image stabilization alone is worth the extra money. On the other hand, it has those analog style controls, so the XT32 might be an interesting choice if you are looking for those. Panasonic G85 or G80 is a 2016 camera which is still on sale and it still has some strengths within the category, but it also shows its age in certain areas. The biggest strength of the G85 is the combination of a very solid no-crop 4K video and effective in-body image stabilization. That was a big breakthrough at the time. It uses a pretty old 16 megapixel sensor, but the image quality is still ok for social media and for less demanding online publishing. The ergonomy and the handling of the G85 is still excellent even by 2023 standards. A major weakness of the G85 is the autofocus. This is a relatively early version of the DFD which is a bit unpredictable and not particularly reliable. If you decide to invest into the Micro Four Third system, I recommend paying some extra money for the G9, which offers a better value in my opinion. G90 or G95 is basically a G85 with a more modern 20 megapixel sensor. It offers better image quality for stills, but it is actually a worse video camera due to the additional crop in 4K video. To be honest, it is not my personal favorite. I would say either save the money with the G85 or go straight for the G9. Panasonic LX100 Mark II is certainly an honorable mention. It is basically a cross between a compact camera and Micro Four Thirds interchangeable lens camera. It has the same Micro Four Thirds sensor as the GX9, but it uses a pretty unique concept with a fixed lens that doesn't cover the whole sensor, but you can choose your aspect ratio. It has 24-70mm f1.8-2.8 lens which is pretty good. LX100 2 output looks somewhat more rich in comparison to 1 inch compact cameras, but the latest 1 inch cameras such as the ZV-1 are not that far behind. You will also have to live with some compromises such as the fixed screen and lack of microphone input. I personally don't mind that because the LX100 is all about the size to performance ratio and it is a niche camera. You can still get one if you like this concept, but it was discontinued so you may want to hurry up. A specific category are action and pocket cameras such as the GoPro or DJI Pocket. I will not cover those in this video, but I have made a video about the best action and pocket cameras in the late 2022 which will be linked in the description. Some of them, for example the Pocket 2, are definitely worth checking out. Here I would also like to include two types of cameras that I don't recommend buying despite the low price. The first type is an entry-level DSLR, or actually any DSLR. DSLR is an obsolete technology. Working with an optical viewfinder is a lot more difficult than with a live view type EVF or display. There is a learning curve and learning how to work with DSLR just to save a couple of bucks by buying an old DSLR makes no sense. Just don't do it. The other type of cameras that I don't recommend are Canon EOS M cameras, also deceptively affordable at the moment. EOS M was or is Canon's dedicated APS-C mirrorless mount which has proved to be a dead end. The cameras in the system never really receive the latest technology either. For example, the EOS M50 is one of the worst cameras that I've ever tested. It has far worse dynamic range than cameras with smaller Micro Four Thirds sensor, the 4K that it produces is a bad joke, 1080p looks like 720p and the build quality is subpar. Other EOS M cameras are not much better than that. So these were, in my opinion, the best and the worst cameras under $1000 that you can get in mid-2023. 
This video unexpectedly ended up being a trip down the memory lane. That's just how it is. The cameras in this price category are not the priority for the manufacturers nowadays. Despite that, there are some pretty capable cameras that will get the job done available at this price point. I hope that this video will be helpful if you are in a market for an affordable camera and that it will help you make the right choice. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.